coming to you from the historic Ingleside Inn in Palm Springs, California. This very spot where I'm standing right now, June Allison was married here. Uh, Frank Sinatra and Barbara had their engagement party here. Bob Hope has been here. Uh, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and his wife Maria. Everyone has come through this place. Boy, I'll tell you if the walls could talk. There's a plate of homemade wishes on the kitchen windowsill. And it is enough to fill our lives with love. We're here with the amazing oh. Dick Van Patten. Everybody, of course, knows Dick from Eight is Enough yeah. back in the 70s and 80s. And he has this new book out now called 80 is Not Enough. What an amazing life you have had. I was, I, I really, I was so incredibly entertained by this oh, book. I'm so glad you said that, thank you. It truly. I have had a great life, it's all because of my mother. She pushed me into it, as I say in the book. Seven and, years uh, old, you're on stage on Broadway. Right, yes, playing Melvin Douglas' son. And your uh, Italian mother hey, hey, hey. was behind you every oh, step she, of the way. She was very aggressive, and I thank God for it. I've had a wonderful life. Dick, you have worked with some of the biggest names in stage and film and television, everyone from the Barrymores to the Lunces. Of, of everyone, can you think of a particular actress or actor who you thought was just the most talented? I, I have somebody. I worked with Lynn Fontan and Alfred Lunt, yes. and they were the best I ever worked with. They were unbelievable. They used to talk over each other. I mean, you, you, it was hard to tell they were acting. They would both talk at the same time. That's very difficult to do. And still you, be understood. And still be understood and so, sound so real. Because it's natural. That's they what we They were the do. best. I was with them for three years. Now tell me the play that was. It was called Oh Mistress Mine, and I played their son. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Every juvenile in New York read for it, and they finally got it down to three of us. And it was down to Roddy McDowell, me, and Marlon Brando. Really? And I, I got it. That's, and, that's not too bad. Uh, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, you, anyway. So you beat out Marlon Brando yeah, he and Roddy McDowell. Yeah, he mentioned his book. And Roddy McDowell was always mad at me. He said, you never should have got that part. It was an English boy. I am English, and you have a New York accent. He was always so mad, but he was half kidding. You but, know? you know, I mean, if you're good, you're good. Yeah. What was so fascinating to me in this book was that this illustrious, amazing career, and yet at one point, the offers started to dry up a little bit, and you had three sons to support, yes. and you said... I'm going to become a real estate agent. Yeah. And it blew me away. Yeah, I did well, too. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I broke a record. I sold seven houses in one week. I think it was a record in New York, anyway. To me, the fact that somebody would be so down to earth that he would be willing to take that kind of, take on a new career, yeah. and then to soar to the greatest heights after yeah. that. I got lucky again, yeah. <laughs> And speaking of lucky, you are a gambling man. Oh, yes. That's in the book, too. It's in the book. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. You talk in the book about playing poker and being held up at gunpoint. Yes. That's the worst feeling. They, they, to put a half a gun, put it at your head. My knees started to tremble like that. This big gun, this big gold gun went right at my temple like that. Yeah. Oh, boy. That was scary. But you didn't stop you from playing poker. No, I came back the next week and played again. <laughs> and you were commentator on the World Series of Poker. Yes, and then my son took over. My son, yeah. Vincent Van Patten, does the show now. You have some interesting stories about death in your book. You, you talk about an aunt who died who was actually laid in state uh, next to your parents' bed. You oh, <laughs> that's right. But I was only a little boy then. I was 10 years old. But in those days, when someone died, they would put flowers on the house and they would put the casket and the person in the house. And by, uh, it was a two-family house. And the, it was the first floor, the living room, my mother and father slept in the living room, and they put the casket with the dead person right next to, I don't know, and I was in the next room. It was a very eerie feeling. <laughs> That's what you say. You say, my, my, my parents seem to be sleeping just fine, but I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I don't know how they slept. They were about three feet away from the casket. An open casket, too. It's been so great to talk to us. Thank oh, you so nice much. Nice talking to you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. Bye.